Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Bearing the Light. This is the Monte Cook Games uh, team here playing Numenera using the brand new books, uh, Discovery and Destiny, which uh, backers got the PDFs for uh, starting yesterday. We're all really excited about that. And uh, so now you can follow along in the rules as we play and, and see the things that we're talking about. We're hoping that uh, fulfillment of the uh, hard hardcover books comes soon. We're, you know, it's going to be later this month, we think, and uh, we are excited about that, too. Um, we're getting ready for Gen Con and lots and lots of Numenera uh, events there as well. So it's a, it's a Numenera summer here. Um, but with Bearing the Light, uh, what is going on is uh, our wonderful team of explorers here has gathered together on a very important mission. Um, and this is uh, at the behest of the the villa or the rather the town that you come from called Neon. Neon uh, lies to the uh, east of the Baadenu forest and you have been uh, tasked with leading a caravan to set up a new outpost south of Neon by quite a ways uh, in, in the hopes that this will become a, 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 an enabler to uh, aid in traffic and trade and communication with some of the other aldea that lie to the south. So uh, who are these people who have uh, been tasked with this mission? Um, let's start with Darcy. Hello, I'm Darcy. I'm our community relations coordinator uh, in, you know, by day, but by night. I am <laughs> Eldin. I'm a, a, a Vargellan Arcus who crafts illusions, and I am a little bit the kind of leadery person of our of our expedition here so um but i am a, a visitant so i you have my character art right right next to me there but i look a little different and sometimes i can shift around uh my organs with my crucible to become a little faster or a little smarter that day um, and i'm very confused by these static organisms or more static that surround me so that that is eldon how about you shauna uh, I'm playing Keen, uh, an optimistic Jack who augments flesh with graphs. So pretty much, I just think everything is awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, and Bruce, who are you playing? I'm playing uh, Kuo, who's a right, and he's also a right who focuses mind over matter, which means that he has some sort of mental abilities that he's both still exploring and also using those to... Uh, uh, help you know make his right abilities which is to craft all these crazy numenera or at least try to do so to the best of his ability and sean and i'm playing tayrog a clever delve who lives in the wilderness he's a very woodsy sort of good at tracking sort of person and apparently i have attracted the interest of a local animal <laughs> all right and so uh most of you had uh earned some XP from previous uh, exploits, which we'll get to in a second, but I thought it would be interesting to talk about. You all have Tier 2 characters. We started at Tier 2 um, because this mission is just too big and important for Tier 1. And uh, some of you spent some XP. Uh, I know that, Darcy, I know that you had Elden. What, what did you do? Uh, Elden is uh, realizing how the, you know, the strange expanse of the the ninth world and the wilderness outside of neon uh is requiring them to be a little more agile a little more dexterous there's a lot of the earth shakes uh were, were quite fascinating so um eldon is going to get a is going to focus on getting a little faster at, at speed based tasked by uh, taking an extra edge in speed so cool. that cost me four big xp which means i'm down to zero so hopefully it was worth it and Bruce, you uh, mentioned that you were going to do something for Kuo. I'd also built up a little bit of XP, so I spent four of those, uh, kind of in the way I was describing before, focusing my mind over matter. So I, I gave myself an additional one point in edge, intellect edge. Mm, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, maybe that is even representing how you're using your 
tele telekinetic powers to uh you know just aid in your various tasks and whatnot that's pretty I like cool. that uh sean i know you said that tayrog is hoarding his <laughs> xp like a miser yes <laughs> i have six right now <laughs> and uh shauna what about keen so keen has the ability to graft as part of augments flesh with grafts and last time we picked up this weird crazy biomechanical tentacly cool hey i don't know what it is we don't we don't know entirely know what it is um, but there's a possibility that Keen can graft it onto his body. And so I took an um, an extra edge in intellect so that when that time comes, I have an advantage, hopefully, and won't suddenly turn into some kind of crazy Dr. Moreau thing. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Absolutely nothing. It's going to be awesome. So the first thing that you uh, all did is that you went to a place where people from Neon had tried to set up an outpost before, and that was actually uh, into the forest itself. But you discovered what had uh, sort of eliminated that expedition and that outpost, which were these strange ground storms is what uh, the people apparently called them. Um, which made the place uninhabitable and also convinced you that that was not the right place to set up uh, your your own outpost. At least, it, at least that spot right there. Are, it's not like the entire forest is filled with ground storms, but that one location turned out to be uh, a bad choice. So instead, um, you headed east out of the forest again and uh, started making your way toward where you knew there to be a large and supposedly mostly empty uh, Numenera ruin. And uh, there you know, was some talk back in Neon that maybe you could utilize this ruin for you know, your own purposes and, and kind of set up a base there. But on your way there, you discovered uh, a craft that apparently flew through the sky not very long ago, but had, had crashed. Uh, and uh, you, you, you discovered the source of that crash, which was a creature that had somehow been able to shut down uh, the power to certain Numenera devices and had made the thing crash and was trying to sort of feed on the, on the craft. You defeated the creature, and uh, you explored the craft a little bit and learned that it was piloted, uh, all, all the occupants were dead, but it was piloted by people from an aldea uh, one of the Aldea that you were hoping to establish contact with. So um, that's perhaps a valuable bit of intel that you have now um, as far as that goes. And one of them was wearing the symbol of uh, an Aeon Priest. Mm -hmm. So in the course of this, uh, the, these two sort of experiences, you found some interesting devices as well as scavenged some Iotum and things like that. Uh, what have you found? Well, uh, one of the things that we found was this device that would start walking along behind you. And it was also something that was hinged, so you could put a bunch of stuff inside of it. So we've decided to call it a carry-all. And uh, it was apparently used the same way as the previous tenants of it, because uh, when we found it in that cave, back in that abandoned uh, settlement, it contained several other pieces of iodum and stuff, which of course uh, Kuo just added to his own supply of iodum against that future day when he creates mm -hmm. his next installation for Cypher. Cool, cool. Excellent, and uh, I know Eldon has been toying with a toying with and and gently trying not to activate desperately uh, a a strange uh, stone or. Um, a very strange device we found inside the tentacly creature, I believe, is where we found it. Um, and when, while our more Numenera learned folks were tinkering with it, they found that it it seemed to be able to shift gravity around in curious ways, where we may be able to uh, move he heavy objects into specific locations, and they seem to kind of just stay there floating or otherwise ignoring gravity in ways that didn't quite make sense so uh <laughs> that sounds like a very exciting macgyvery tool that i'm excited to see go uh desperately wrong for us <laughs> so i think we're calling that our gravity shifter okay and tayrog is wearing uh the bounding boots that we found in an earlier session and they basically 
uh, enhance jumping and running. So uh, you can run faster and jump higher. And uh, Terog is not particularly possessive of material things. So he's lent them to one of our NC NPC companions, Joe, to run back to the main group and let them know that they needed to come meet up with us for some salvage. Right, and and when you when she came back, she returned them. Uh, yes, so uh, there are six other people with you. Um, there's uh, five sisters: Joe, Mayan, Esten, Lunasthal, and Aaliyah, and an older gentleman who is quiet and gruff named Morit. Uh, they help you drive the. Uh, the three floating wagons that you have and uh, that are carrying all of your supplies. But uh, as we ended last time, you were uh, on the approach toward this tower. Uh, off in the distance, you can see it kind of as you go over, over the crest of a hill. It's a, it's a tall structure of what looks like maybe metal and synth or, or maybe glass. It seems to glisten in the, in the sunset. And uh, there were some creatures kind of flying overhead as you approached, but it uh, 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 they, they seemed to be large and impressive looking, but harmless ultimately is what you determined. And you continue to approach. Uh, are you going to, when you get close, when you get uh, to the point where you, uh, you know, can can reach it uh, easily. Are you guys going to go ahead, or are you going to bring the caravan right up to the structure? I think we should keep everyone else a safe distance away because we don't know what sort of dangers are in it. So at least you know, a long distance, perhaps a very long distance away. Okay. Yeah, let's split the difference there, and yeah, long, very long distance. I would suggest Kuros would suggest. Okay. So uh, this structure, as you as you get even closer, the day is um, kind of drawing to a close, but it's not dark. Um, but it, you probably only got about an hour of daylight left, mm -hmm. and uh, this structure has a, a, a very irregular pattern on the outside, um, and. and protrusions from it that you don't really totally understand and as you were looking at it um you would you would say that it, it, it the outside is is completely solid uh there don't seem to be like windows or doors or anything like that that you can relate to however uh upon closer examination you don't have to kind of move too far to the south before you can see that there is an opening right at ground level uh, but it clearly is not was not part of the original construction. Something has has made a large hole, a big gaping uh, hole in the side of this thing, right at ground level. And as you uh, make your way toward that hole, you see that there is a tall, robed figure, a, someone standing just outside this entrance seemingly watching and waiting for you to approach uh, the distance that you're at this looks like someone wearing robes and maybe armor uh, a very I tall believe... someone correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i believe that we have talked about staying outside overnight rather than trying to venture in here just as starting to dark well, apparently you decided to uh, instead go check it out, um, at least as an initial exploration here in the evening. Sure. Or not, I'm sure that not, was not my yet. fault. All right, so, so optimistic. Let's, uh, let's approach this figure and see what he has to tell us. Okay. So, I look to Elden when I say that to see what Elden has to say about that suggestion. Elden seems to get even taller uh, than their usual <laughs> length and, uh, and sort of tries to stride confidently in, in the manner of, of humans, usually, as that seems to go over most well in our encounters. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to not speak out to it, call out to it quite yet. Okay. This thing is, is clearly watching you approach and seems to be waiting for you. Um, it is 
at least seven, if not eight feet tall. And uh, it seems to have, you're not actually sure if it's its head or if it's wearing a helmet. Mm. It's clearly not a human. Mm. Uh, but it, the front of its helmet just has a single, single aperture, which sort of looks like a glass eye or something like that. But, um, you, but you're not really sure. Interesting. Uh, I, I'm going to, as I as I continue approaching, I'm going to um, uh, tap into my ability to understand things that I that I study for a moment. Uh, so okay. this is. Uh, it's just an action, but I'm going to observe or study a creature or object, and my next interaction will have an asset. So I'm really watching that eye and trying to understand how it behaves with this organism, but it's really not giving me a lot of information. So we'll see if that asset actually helps me. <laughs> okay. Um, so if I get, you know, five yards away, is it is it reacting to me yet? Uh, at that distance, you can see that it is, it is sort of looking at all four of you... Um, as though it's kind of studying you. Hmm. But it does not speak. I'm trained in assessing danger, but it doesn't seem that it's giving us any clues as to whether it's planning anything hostile, right? Um, you could see if you notice anything out of the ordinary using your, your skill if you'd like. All right, I will do that. Okay. No, a four. Okay, and you're reducing the difficulty by one with your skill. Uh, this thing doesn't it's totally enigmatic you have no idea if it's dangerous or not I bet it's a welcoming committee <laughs> do we have anything to give it we all have some oddities and things yeah um uh, yeah, it, 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 certain, it suddenly turns its back to you and is staring into the gaping hole oh gosh uh all right, at that, I, I, I pull myself up straight and I'm going to uh, try to, I, I'm hold I'm, I'm fishing for something out in my oddity bag uh, and it is a piece of uh, clear glass in a synth frame um, and I start uh, manipulating it uh, and it seems to be showing random images sort of on, on that piece of glass. Uh, and I'm, we'll just see if that, if that, if it reacts to that. So I'm going to try to get around it, which means I'm getting close to this gaping hole, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I want to face what I think is its face. Um, and at this point, I'm going to say, uh, um, is this your home? Are we welcome here? When you when you speak, it, it, it definitely turns and kind of seems to focus on you. And it says in your language, in, in, in the, the language of the truth, um, just as as clear as uh anyone from neon would speak uh but its voice is 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 kind of weirdly muffled maybe by this armor or something that it's wearing but it says inside there are green objects but not orange can we all hear this or just tell mm -hmm. them at this point nope you can all hear it so I will attempt to use my understanding Numenera. Does, it, does that make orange or green objects? Does that have any significance to me? Uh, you can see if that says anything to your your, skill, to your your background in that. Natural one. Oh, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Some chains are never <laughs> broken. <laughs> I'm okay. so excited. And you just spent all your XP. So did I. <laughs> I still have two XP. Oh. But this is all happening inside my head, so unless it, I, my head explodes, I, I'll go with it. <laughs> no, no, well, remember, I mean, a, a, a GM intrusion triggered by one doesn't even have to relate. I mean, it just, just means I get to put out a GM intrusion. It doesn't have to have anything to do with, uh, with what you're doing. Um, so, yeah, you, it doesn't, what he said doesn't mean anything to you. Um, and, uh, however, from inside the structure, uh, which is mostly dark, because like I said, there's no, there were no windows or anything in there, so there doesn't seem to be, other than this, um, this opening, there doesn't seem to be any way for light to get in. You hear a loud crash that, uh, it, it sounds like 
sounds like something metallic and large and heavy crashing down onto the ground or onto something else equally large and metallic. And it does not seem to phase this creature at all. It does not even seem to notice. I mean, all of you, it's loud enough that, you know, you probably have a difficult time suppressing at least a little bit of a start. Um, but it seems utterly unfazed. I look to Elden. Oh, no. Uh, the They're the talker. Well, it does this... Yeah, okay. This, this could go... Uh, Almost only poorly, but it's so interesting, I, and I feel like my character would do it. Uh, I have an, an Arcus ability that lets me um, uh, cloud personal memories. Um, so at, at first, I just sort of try to get a sense of its mind. So I, I'm not generally very telekinetic, but I have a little bit uh, of that ability. Um, uh, if I interact or study a target for at least a round, I gain a sense of how its mind works which I can use against it in the most blunt fashion possible. So I, I don't actually want to like fully go. I want to initiate that and see how that goes for me before I pull the trigger and uh, basically potentially make it confused and forget what just happened. So what, what kind of you, mind you am I sensing? You want to make it forget what just happened. I don't. Okay. I want to have the, oh. I, I, want to, I want to initiate it and I, I gain a sense of how its mind works. And at that point I can, I can attempt to confuse it or, make it forget i'm not interested uh, in that part i want that first part of how if if this is this does become a danger to me how like i i just want that first part of what's going on in this guy's noggin and if it's dangerous then i can get into the uh confusing it for a round <laughs> okay are you modifying this task at all um yeah i would like to spend uh uh two levels of effort okay so it's gonna cost me a lot. <laughs> but I think it's worth it. Um, all right. And it doesn't say I have to touch it. I uh, I just need to have been interacting with it. So I okay. think, uh, yeah, I think my, my big head fin maybe goes very, very still where it usually wobbles. <laughs> okay. So I have to roll a dice. I'm so used to GMing. I forget I have to roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I only roll an eight. All two right. levels of effort. So you are trying to make contact with a mind that you presume is in there somewhere. Right. And uh, it it is sort of the the mental equivalent of of like walking into a, a place and suddenly finding yourself in this bizarre maze where you were expecting a straight corridor. And it's suddenly oh, no. very, very confusing, and and you're you you don't know what you're looking at, and there's way, way, way more options of things to look at than you thought there were to look at, and in fact, you need to make an intellect defense roll. That sounds about correct. <laughs> this is a GM intrusion. Nice. Okay, I will take that GM intrusion because I have no <laughs> XP with which to refuse you. <laughs> um, I am. Uh, let's see. Um, I have no training in that sort of thing, and I rolled a 10, so only a okay. level 3, which I'm suspecting is not great. Okay, so, uh, the rest of you, uh, see Elden, you know, getting a strong bit of concentration, and, and as Darcy said, Elden's head fin goes very still, and he, and they are focused on this, this creature, and then suddenly Eldon staggers backward and uh, uh, Eldon, what's what, what, or rather, Darcy, what is one of Eldon's like worst memories? What's one of the worst things that's ever happened to them in their life? Wow. Um, I think it's uh, it was a moment of intense physical pain. It was when something happened something went terribly wrong with my my actual my crucible like the the part of me that you know helps me shift everything around and so i just felt myself being torn apart and you know all i felt i felt all all of the vigor drain from me at once and then come rushing back and all of uh you know all my body parts are basically being um broken down and put back together and what was the, what were the circumstances when you were trying to use your crucible that, that in which that happened Ooh, I think I was, uh, I was attempting, we, we had, uh, 
maybe a, a new piece of Numenera had uh, just come into Neon, and I was trying to help out. I was still apprenticing under my old mentor, um, Laset, and uh, and I, I was maybe overextending myself. I really wanted to um, understand what this, this piece of Numenera was about and be able to help us use this for our town. And so I, I tried to basically uh, shift everything around at once, but something about the Numenera's energy field started you know i i didn't i didn't practice okay. i didn't start to i just i think it's a confluence of numenera and trying too hard as soon as uh like so eldon as far as eldon is concerned eldon is is back in that moment oh, no. except it it is different you're you're in that moment you found you're you're back in neon you're you found this this numenera thing and you're helping to decipher what it is and everything and uh you're you're doing the crucible and it uh it, instead of it being horrific and terrible uh it, even though everything goes all wrong it's suddenly fantastic and wondrous uh and it's it's as though the, the what you remembered before as being painful is is like it, uh, brings you uh, uh, super joy and happiness and everything. And so it's not the way you remember it. It's all muddled and confused. And uh, there are parts of other memories that you have that are sort of intruding on this memory of, of happy things that happened. And it, it, it's all a, a huge bit of confusion. And you're just sort of in this reverie and the rest of you just see Eldon just clearly kind of checks out, uh, backs up, mouth agape, eyes wide open, and uh, you don't know what's going on. And the creature in, in armor turns away from Eldon and looks at uh, Kuo. Uh, Kuo, not really sure what's happening, will spend an action putting up his deflective mental uh, screen of uh, tele telekinetic uh, energy. But, uh, but Kuo will say, <clears throat> We mean you no harm. Please do not attack us. We are merely here to investigate this structure. And it replies to you. And it says... Your great grandmother was unfaithful to your great grandfather. Oh God! It's only through my serenity of my mental mind that do I just kind of play that <laughs> off. Okay. And I say, of what possible significance is that now here? And I will glance at Elden to make sure that Elden's not becoming a zombie and attacking us. No, Elden's still just standing there. And when you ask about what significance it has, um, it, it, it seems to just kind of focus its gaze, if, that, if that's really what it's doing, at you very closely, and it just seems to nod sagely. And then it looks at Keen. Uh, Keen is um, surprisingly quiet. <laughs> because this is <laughs> something that's very outside of his yay experience um and so he uh, i think that he is going he's actually gonna like kind of look away because it seems to be the eye that is affecting his friends and so he's gonna kind of look away and he's gonna start talking um and I'm, he's gonna be like i don't know what's happening but we, we've got this and uh i'm gonna use encouraging presence uh and for one minute allies within short range gain an asset on their defense rolls Cool. Okay. So everyone gets that uh, that bonus, uh, and in fact, uh, because of that, um, uh, why don't you make a, a new defense roll for Elden? Yay! <laughs> uh, so acid two defense rolls, and uh, does my understanding still count as mm -hmm. uh, helping me theoretically? Theoretically, I kind of. I have a sense of this thing, especially now that I've been in it. Uh, so I rolled a 14. I have the asset from understanding, and I'm better at defense rolls, thanks to Keen. Okay. So you, um, you, 
you begin you're, you're able to process like what's actually going on around you again right where you are there's this weird tall creature your friends are there you're not in that back in that moment but the thing is is that the actual memory of that experience is still all jumbled and weird wow. and the things that were terrible before are good now and it, it's weird oh man but there doesn't seem to be any uh lasting effects um, now that you're kind of out of that reverie um uh, other I, I, than the fact that you've kind of lost that memory as anything useful <laughs> uh i'm still disoriented and i think i'm going to take a number of steps just away from this creature and uh um uh i think this being has no value for us this is not a safe place um and i'm going to motion for all of you to sort of walk away from it with me and when you say that it looks back at eldon and it says your species is once again evolving. Duh. Do you think he means? Do you think it means me? <laughs> <laughs> I show my grafted arm. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, that only makes me want to run further. Uh, so I'm going to basically, you know, and unless you you all are not following, um, I I want to retreat a bit. Yeah, well, I can retreat a bit. Inside or away? Uh, can we get around it? I, so there's this hole it's in front of, right? Um, and mm -hmm. that's a hole sort of in this smooth glass synthy weird tower structure, right? Yes, but it's not like blocking your way. It's just it's just standing near it. Um, and it doesn't make any, like, as you kind of had to, if you remember when you were approaching it, it had turned toward the hole. And so yeah. you had moved kind of around right. already. It doesn't seem to take any motions to try to stop you or anything. Um, I would I would like to go in then, but just briefly. Uh, okay. uh, so, because and I'm I'm being careful because I know we heard a crash. I want to know what the crash is. Okay. Um, it is it is very dark in there. Um, I pull out a glow globe, which okay. is a little light. What are the? Okay. What are the rest of you doing? I'm following Eldon as if almost protectively. Okay. I'm I'm following Eldon definitely protectively and alert for danger. Okay. Because actually, I'm not entirely sure that Eldon is in their right mind right now. Fair. Okay. And what about uh, Keen? Do I sense that this is a is a? Because I haven't. I, I'm I'm very ignorant about um, what's happening. Because right, it's all in everyone's brain. Do I sense this is this is like a a creature or humanoid? Can I tell? Um, well, you know, all you've seen are robes and a helmet. Okay. Um, so, uh, you're, I mean, okay. you, could, you could see, you could, an intellect based role would allow us to see if you have any knowledge of this thing, like if you've ever heard of anything like this. Oh, could I uh, use a player intrusion? I have an XP. Okay. And, what would you like? And say that like I I had heard a story once about a creature like this, and so it gives me a little bit of extra knowledge. Okay, what's the uh, what's the what's the context for the story that you heard? Mm. So um, I would say that I as I was talking to someone else um, who helped me do my graphs because you know I can't do them totally by myself even though I'm really good at it. Uh, they were telling me a story about a creature like this that they saw once, and so. I, I was a little out of it because I was probably grafting onto myself at the, at the time, but I was still listening because, you know, it's cool and interesting. Um, and so I, I was hearing this story about, because, you know, we trade stories about weird creatures. Okay. So, um, so you know, as you know, uh, player intrusions always sort of have to be, you're, you're sort of affecting, you're, you're affecting the world, not, not yourself. Um, so, uh, I need, I want to know more about the relationship of the person who, who you heard this from. Who did you hear it from? Oh, okay. So I have a person in, back in town who helps me with my, with my graphs. Um, okay. So it's someone who's like trained in science and biology and has lots of experience with unusual creatures. And so that's their background. Is okay. that kind of what you're asking? 
Yeah, more or less. And so uh, then what I would... Okay, that works. that works. So I would assume that they would know maybe whether or not it was a creature that was dangerous to us or, you know, something something simple and, and easy like that. Right. Um, so what you know then is uh, this creature is a Philethus. At least that's what humans call them. And uh, they seem to be uh, encountered in very random and strange places. They don't seem to have any... Uh, they don't seem to have any con context or relationship with the, with the world around them, except they seem to just know things as though they are always observing things. Um, and they have lots and lots of knowledge, but they don't seem to have a way to convey that knowledge in a way that most humans can understand. And it's possible that it's telling you things of significance, or it's possible that it's not, and you don't know, and you don't know the difference. Uh, but you, the, the stories are that sometimes things that it has said, that they have said, um, have turned out to become very important. Um, they also don't seem to have kind of a relationship with time and space in the same way that, uh, that humans do. So they're just utterly enigmatic, um, almost never dangerous, but, but not necessarily beneficial or helpful automatically either. Cool. Then I will, um, I'm going to make a note of, of what it said about the green and the orange. Um, and because that might, because I know that that might become important later on and I'm going to remember that. And then, uh, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go into the Kate, uh, I'm going to follow, uh, Eldon as well, but, um, sort of being willing to look at it now because I'm interested in it mm. and I remember that it's, it's not usually dangerous. Okay. Then as you, it sounds like you kind of bring up the rear and as you do and, and move in, but are looking back at the thing, it looks right at you um, with, with an intensity that you can't quite even explain by something just wearing a helmet, but uh, it says to you, many years in the future, there is a device which will drill down into the heart of the world and crack it open like an egg. We hope you do not activate it. I have a life mission to not activate this device now. <laughs> I, uh, I am so, I feel so tingly. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna keep Thank going. you. <laughs> All right. And then um, you, you go in. Eldon has already activated the globe globe. And so inside uh, you can see that, so, so the, the, the structure is this immense tower, um, probably, you know, like five, six hundred feet tall and, uh, you know, a good 200, 250 feet in diameter. And it looks as though as you as you go in, uh, I'll, at least half of that diameter is is just this big open expanse. And there are uh, large supports and things uh, stretching up it's it's you kind of get the feeling that you have entered into maybe like just an area where there's just lots of support structures but it's not uh, you know like like you've, you you've just called went into the crawl space of a house is, is sort of the, the best analogy that I can give um, and uh, it does seem as though uh, maybe 50 feet or so inside uh, there was some kind of, of device um, uh, some kind of structure maybe with a control panel or something like that but uh, a huge support beam has clearly fallen down from this uh, uh, from this sort of understructure that you're inside and has crushed it completely and you can see a couple of other places where support structures have fallen down too, um, but there's still so many of them up that it doesn't really, f I mean, 
you don't feel like you're in a lot of danger here. Okay. It doesn't seem like it's un, unsafe or unsound. Uh, it just happened to happen very recently. Mm. Um, you can, uh, you know, investigate it further, I guess, and see if if you can determine why that happened. But I, I would I would like to I say. Uh, figure out what the structural soundness of this area is by applying my expertise. Okay. If you, uh, rest of you don't mind. Uh, please, your uh, we we value your uh, your assessments of all things, Kuo. All right. Well, going very carefully, I will walk up to that root control panel and look at the support and all the nearby structures to see if there is anything I can learn. Okay. Do you have perception or another skill that might come in handy? I think you're muted, Bruce. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I have understanding Numenera and I have uh, carpentry. <laughs> um, uh, that's cool. Um, it's probably well beyond your, your carpentry skills. Actually, you know what? It's not. Um, make a roll and apply your carpentry skills. Yes. All right. I'm also going to apply a level becker to this. So because okay. I... so you're reducing the difficulty by two. You yeah. know what? If, uh, reducing the difficulty by two, I... you don't even need to make a roll. Using the test by two steps, yeah. Because you, uh, you can see that, in fact, everything seems perfectly structurally sound, and the support beam... So the support, there's all these support beams and they're all kind of crisscrossed mm. and making all these angles down here. And the support beam that fell, you can clearly see, and this is maybe where your carpentry comes from, it was sawn through, like, like with a tool. All right, well, I will, as I stand there and look at that, I, when I realize that, of course, I will point out to the rest of you, look, look there, a tool, something is in here sawing these supports. And I look up. <laughs> okay. Uh, you do not see anything. I'm going to look around just because I am skilled. I'm specialized in perception and trained in assessing danger. I'm just making sure there are no overt threats, creatures, automatons, you know, poison cloud generating machines, anything like that that is in this area that we should be alarmed about. Okay. Um, well, with those skills in mind, again, no, uh, and, and because you're sort of uh, doing this kind of after the fact in a fashion, um, you can see, particularly playing off of what Kuo just told you, that there was some kind of tripwire or something that was located kind of by this support and, and you think that actually someone maybe or something set this as a trap. Oh, uh, no. you, you think that, that, that there was something like would trigger this thing falling down maybe on you. Um, but it clearly was triggered before you even came in. And there's no sign of what might trigger it. In fact, from your eye, uh, and if you call Cool over, uh, Cool can help confirm, it looks like whatever the mechanism was, just failed. Point it out. So, very, it was very simplistic, right? I mean, it's just a wire hooked to the support and then the support almost all the way, you know, uh, uh, sawn through. So we don't see any, any victims. Mm -mm. Okay. But it did totally smash this device. Uh, oh. I'm going to look around for other devices, uh, exits laterally, vertically. Okay. What are the rest of you doing? It's a big area, so that'll take a little while. What are the rest I'm of you doing? Sift through this smash device. Uh, you are able to. Torch salvage. Right. Um, you think that you could manage to, if you took the time, you could get some parts out of it? Um, but uh, you think that anything more valuable than that was probably destroyed? No. All right. Well, keep that in mind for later. Part, uh, part scavenging. Okay. 
other than that, there doesn't seem to be anything down here other than uh, like metal supports and you know some kind of duct work and stuff like that. And, and we don't sense another like a, that it leads to something yet, like door. Big, like I know that um, Tayrog is out looking, but like there's no, it's no, there's no obvious connectors. Connectors to what? Something else. Uh, no, not okay. not that you can see, not not yet. Um, okay. So, uh, Tayrog, you eventually find uh, in this place, you know that you're pretty sure that this area that you have moved into, you hesitate to even call it a chamber because, like I said, it's, it's really sort of like a uh, a substructure. Um, it doesn't quite take up the entirety of this uh, footprint. You, what you know to be about a 250 foot diameter tower um, but you don't find anything that looks like a door or anything like that that it gives access away um, to, to any other part of the tower with one exception um, I mentioned that there's ductwork right that there's these sort of tubes and whatnot um, they are uh, kind of oval shaped uh, in diameter and they kind of run all over the place and uh, each one of them is maybe about five feet wide and about three feet tall because like i said they're oval uh, and you find a place in one of them where a hole has been ripped into the side of it giving access into this duct that's the that's the closest thing that you have found to anything that looks like a door So just to be, make sure I'm, I'm understanding what we're seeing, this it's like the whole interior of the tower is is kind of this open area with all these crisscrossing beams of support. And it's no, hollow. this no the ceiling here, uh, the, the 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 tower itself, like I said, is about maybe five six hundred feet tall. The interior in here is probably it's still impressive, but it's only about maybe forty feet tall. Oh, okay. So there's still a whole tower above you. You're just in the substructure beneath it, holding it up. Kuro, do you have any idea what that machine did before the support pillar landed on it? Can I try and make an understanding Numenera task? All right, mm -hmm. I will try it. Um, I'm the trained in that. Oh yeah, trained in understanding Numenera and. Uh, Specialized in crafting, if that has any bearing, uh, and also I'll apply. You know what? I'll apply two levels of effort. I okay. Can do that. So you're using it by how many steps altogether? I'm using it by two steps altogether, and uh, I only roll a natural three though. Okay. You have no idea. I say it was something to. Uh, I say it was probably something to regulate the temperature, but I'm not sure. Hmm. And Keen, did you tell us about that uh, hole in the conduit that you found? No, you found that. Oh, I found that. Oh, then I tell everyone about that. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> now I, I do. You know. <laughs> this is how we can get to the upper level. Hmm. Uh, night has come and we have been traveling. Should we... Uh, it, it also concerns me that there is some agent here which... Uh, sets traps even if um, somewhat ineffectively. Perhaps we can keep a watch on it overnight and see if we can suss out who this agent might be and then explore the duct in the morning. Yeah, so I would like to rest for the night. Camp in here or camp outside the tower, do you think, Eldon? I'd go outside to the rest of our group. Yeah, that, that was Darcy shaking her head. <laughs> Never <laughs> camp inside the tower you don't know anything about. Um, but there are those creatures outside. Uh, uh, I, I will leave that to Tayrog. Do you think this is a safe uh, place to camp, or should we camp outside? I think considering that we are, you know, 500 feet from our comrades and they have the food and such, <laughs> might as well just go back out to where they are. Perfect. All right. Um, I, uh, yeah. 
I was just wondering if there's a way we could actually, like you suggested, monitor the inside of the tower to see if something comes down inside here. But maybe we can, maybe one, maybe we can set up some sort of. Uh, does anyone have any Numenera or something? They could watch something from afar or something crazy like that. Uh, I could connect to one of our creatures, provided they're willing. To see Whoa. each other's eyes. Cool. Hey, do you guys have a sense, those of you who've looked at this, do you sense how how recent it fell or how recent it was made? Is that something you guys can tell from looking at stuff like this? I'm pretty sure that what you heard fall was this thing. I, I would like to take first watch. Uh, it would would someone like to perhaps uh, maybe we'll switch off with one of the the sisters each, or do we want another, or do one of you want to take a watch with me? I think pairing up is a good idea. But did this floating creature is it still there in the entrance? Is it trying to? Yeah, good question. So when you uh, exit the tower, uh, which you do so without any difficulty, there isn't other than the obvious, the one support that's fallen, and, and there's a couple of other, like I had mentioned before, a couple of other other supports that have fallen, but I mean, there are hundreds of these supports, so it uh, doesn't seem to be a huge deal. Uh, uh, there's not, like, not a lot of, there's not rubble or, or any, it's not difficult to get back out. Um, it's, it's actually nice and smooth floor in here, clean, you know, because remember, you're here actually looking to see if this could be something that is habitable. Um, and there's certainly plenty of space in here. Anyway, when you uh, exit out the hole that something made, uh, there is no sign of the creature that uh, Keen referred to as a Philethus. In fact, there aren't even, you know, footprints on the ground where it was standing. And the hole that's in the structure, how wide is it? Uh, it's about maybe 12 feet wide and uh, at least that tall. So I was thinking we could build our campfire at our camp, but build another fire here in this entryway so that anything that comes in or out of the structure, we will have a better chance of seeing it from our camp. That sounds wise. So, okay. All right. I'll do that. Okay, you can get a good fire going. I mean, it won't last, it probably won't last the whole night unless you're here to tend it, but it will last for a while. All right. And then you return back to uh, your comrades. Um, they are eager to know what you found inside. Does it look like someplace that, that we could use? Uh, uh, actually, is it? The one that seems most interested is Esthen. Esthen. She's saying, I was really hoping that this would be the place that would work out. Uh, I would love to live inside a ruin from the prior worlds. How glorious that would be. It would be like being a part of the past. I like You know Esthen. what we saw? What? I'm sorry, you're both talking. I didn't hear what you said, Bruce. I was going to speak to Esthen and say, you know what we saw? Speaking what? of the weirdness of the prior it? worlds, we saw something, and I do look at Keen, called a Philethus, a creature Keen says exists outside of time and space. I don't I know can't, what that means. I can't said. wait to ask. Maybe Elden will tell us the story of, of what happened. It, it talked to her mind, I think. Um, I... Uh, as we're sitting around, s settling down for sort of a, a night, a night's meal, and getting getting everything ready, um, <clears throat> you know, after we've Joe, gotten Joe has already actually got oh. you know, mostly set up by the time you get there. Perfect. That's that's the Joe uh, we look forward to. Um, well, then, as we're you know sitting by our campfire for the evening, um, I I use a my minor illusion ability to create an image of the Philethus. And so I'm, I retell the story of how we met the Philethus and the strange things it said. Um, and then uh, I, I'm sort of uh, hesitant, but at, eventually um, I do tell the story of what happened when it affected my mind. And I go through sort of using this little illusion to, it doesn't make sound, but I can sort of 
show vague images of the time when you know this Numenera device got brought back to town and I tried to use my crucible and everything went horribly horribly wrong uh, and I tell you that it it the being has changed my emotions around that memory and that suggests to me that it is very powerful and I would not like to cross it again it might be wise but is it worth it it attacked you it reacted when I reached out to it and it tinkered with memories in my in my mm. mind I to call it an attack seems more understanding than I have of it so to be pedantically clear because it altered your memories it really altered them so you don't actually remember what the original memory was you don't re oh interesting it changed the events of the memory yes oh into so it, what so, well no the well no the events aren't changed it's the the feeling uh, your reaction right so you don't remember it being terrible <laughs> So I excitedly tell you about that time <laughs> when a Numenera device created this hilarious moment of, of delight <laughs> and joy to all. Why don't you remember? <laughs> and it made you remember this. Well, maybe it was just trying to give you a gift. It's true. It was very kind. <laughs> uh, still, uh, I, I do not understand its methods there and would, would like to. Uh, we should. I, I would not recommend approaching it should any of you see it. Uh, we, we should be careful around it. I'm just glad it didn't talk to me at all. It did tell me something rather disquieting. But those people are dead now, so how can that affect me? Unless it's... Yeah. Kuo becomes quiet. <laughs> I think the thing you should do, Kuo, is overthink it. Meanwhile, I'm making a fire. <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do that overthinking during my watch. Excellent. So um, I don't have anything. Um, yeah. So okay. So who's first on watch? I, don't I, will, I will go with you, Elden. Yay. Oh, Tayrug, do you wanna? I I don't wanna. I can go to second. Yeah, Second's almost as good me. as first. It's all fine to me. I will go with Keen for the first watch. Um. So what I would actually like to do, um, and Monty, you can let me know if like we don't need to get into the granularity of watch here, but I I just have an idea that I wanted to see if it worked out. Um. I, uh, Keen, there's so someone set that trap, I suspect for us, or at least for someone, and, and we don't know who that is. It doesn't have the ring of the Philethus to me. I, I wonder if we can't lure them out, um, perhaps with an illusion. I would like to watch, but with an illusion in front of us, uh, perhaps with little peepholes, <laughs> or at least, you know, with the ability to look through our illusion, uh, so that if it thinks it is sneaking up on us we it is it is sneaking up on the illusion does that sound acceptable to you that sounds exciting let's do this <laughs> excellent um so there's we set a fire in in the place right so that there's light right in the doorway yeah right mm -hmm. in the doorway okay um doorway. yeah i guess uh not not all the way up to the tower so still more just on the outskirts of our camp i'd like to sort of uh set up our little uh, place to hang out and I guess I, I want to put an illusion of the two of us right um, but like 10 feet in front of us so all it is is just the two of us kind of standing and talking and watching so that they're blocking the view of us does that make sense at all sort of how big of an area can you fill with an illusion 10 feet okay. by 10 feet and it doesn't say anything it, it can just be a scene inside that it says, oh, um, I think at this point, maybe it's just a single image. Um, it can move, though, so I can make it walk around or pretend to attack. Um, so I think it's the two of us just standing, and we're, like, hiding behind it, right? It's like I had a cardboard cutout of me and Keen, and we're I hiding behind it. I understand what you're okay. trying to do. Um, okay. <laughs> That's good. All right. Um... Well then, and then you guys are gonna watch. Mm -hmm. So why don't both of you uh, make uh, rolls? For this to be perception based, intellect based. If you don't have perception. Okay. Um, 
I will spend a level of effort, although I'm, I, I, I have training in visually perceiving, so I think that probably relates. That is exactly this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so I had it eased by two, and I rolled a 15, so a level five. Okay. Uh, let's see, I, I, I'm good at sneaking, but I don't think we're particularly trying to hide that much, so um, I will also apply a level of effort, since I have a nice new addition to my I rolled. No. I have some XP. Uh, <laughs> I, I rolled a two. Oh. <laughs> you rolled a two. Okay. I, I figure Alden will take this. What'd you see? <laughs> what did I see? <laughs> so it was nearing the end of your turn at watch when uh, the fire that uh, Tayrog set is already kind of starting to die down. Um, to just kind of a, a small flame and lots of embers. And you saw a creature um, and and you're, you're sure you're sure it wasn't a human. So I'm gonna use the word creature, but you don't get a lot of details mm -hmm. other than um, there were there were too many arms to call it a human. Uh, but it was about human sized and you only caught just the briefest of glimpses in the dying light but it was it it definitely looked like it it was peering out uh, of the hole and uh, you you saw a glint in the in the dying fire of of metal as though it had something or was wearing something metallic and you definitely kind of got the impression that it looked around, probably saw your illusion, and then ducked away, and then you don't see it again. Oh, excellent! Uh, uh, Keen, as you seem so, as 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 you are so learned about strange creatures, uh, do you know of anything that might be about average human size, but with um, additional, uh, I believe, torso appendages? Feet or arms? Hmm. Good question. Really tough to. I mean, you you saw. I mean, it was just like that quick, right? Mm, I could not say. Perhaps arms. Hmm. I don't. Uh, there's lots of things like that, but without more detail, do was it feathered or scaly or did it have clothes? Hmm. By the firelight, I detected a a glint of something that might be metallic, but that Ooh. could be wearing, could be holding. How did I miss that? I was watching so carefully. <laughs> uh, perhaps it is my my uh, my eyes tonight are very very keen. Bad joke, bad joke, Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I accept my self-inflicted GM intrusion. <laughs> um, so now that we know we know something to look out for, perhaps it will be easier for us to spot it or for others to spot it. I don't have anything else I can do while we're on the rest of watch except tell the next poor suckers to go on watch yeah. to look out for okay. it. <laughs> well, nothing else happens that if, if you okay. don't if you don't go investigate or anything, uh, it nothing else is seen, nothing else is heard, and the sun rises the next morning. Um, I'm imagining you guys have got to be probably have all your pools refreshed at this point. Um, yeah. And uh, after a quick breakfast take action and that can be anything you want i would like to spend my xp on advancement now okay uh so just confronted by this potentially dangerous area um i'm, I'm a very curious person i just want to be extra alert and i would like to choose the option uh to select a new delve lore and the one that I want is called Curious, which means that whenever I spend effort on navigation, perception, or initiative tasks in an area that I, is new to me or I've not really explored, I get an extra fee level of effort on it. Cool. That's awesome. Well, you will, of course, have to remind me of that. Because mm -hmm. I won't remember that. 
Well, it's a bright new day. I suggest that we start exploring our potential new outpost for Neon. Mm-hmm. Um, and, are and we comfortable bringing... Hmm? Sorry. Go ahead. No, please go ahead. Should we should we bring the, the whole caravan up close toward the tower now so they can... Many eyes are perhaps better than one, or do you still feel it's too dangerous? This ground floor area seems to be fairly safe, so perhaps if they wanted to camp just on the outside of the structure so they could easily get away if necessary without anybody closing off that hole in the wall. Great. As long as they know to keep a lookout for little trap setting things, right? I mean, there's obviously we're going to have to deal with this situation. Yeah. Excellent. Alright, so we'll bring the bring the team close to the tower where we'll set up a, a camp there, but the, the four of us and... Um, perhaps an interested uh, one of our our expedition members as well. Uh, although I suspect I want to keep a big enough group that they can actually protect themselves if we're not there. So I suggest the four of us check out that vent. Okay. And Kua, so, you... Sorry, who was salvaged that... Uh, I can't remember who salvaged that slug spitter or tried to keep it intact so we could use it. The turret thing? turret yes no, i'm pretty sure you had to leave that behind all right just made sure in the in the other outpost yeah all right so okay. we uh, advance in and make sure there's no changes before we do anything else and then examine the uh, tube that uh, tayrog discovered so another uh torture glow globe and you can uh make your way over to the place where that tayrog found um, and there is one thing that is different. Uh, there is, uh, there, there are two, uh, little pieces of metal, um, laying in front of the, the rented pole, the, re you know, rent in the, in the side of the, uh, the, uh, the ducts, duct, thank you. Um, and both of them, you think, you could probably um, use them, you know, you could use the machines. You could collect those and make the machines. Oh. And then there's another one just inside the duct. Mm. Wait. Uh, I suspect a trap. Um, I always suspect a trap, but um, can I get a, a closer look at those and what's above it? Can I try to see if there's another thing that might trigger when we, when we go in? Uh, I rolled a six, and I'm trained in visually perceiving. Okay. You don't see anything out of the ordinary. Well, I'm actually trained in spotting danger. Okay. And I have specialized in perception, so this is actually kind of my thing. So when Elden is done doing the this supervisor looks fine. look around, then <laughs> I'm actually going <laughs> to apply my, my knowledge to doing this. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that gets me at least... Uh, eases it by two steps. Okay. And I roll a four. I like roll with fours today. Okay. Uh, you also don't see anything amiss here. Um, both of you can kind of confirm that the hole here in this, I mean, it, it clearly, I mean, all the other ductwork is, is perfectly fine. It's not like it's falling apart and full of holes. And uh, it looks as though tools tore open this hole. It also looks like tools open oh, uh, opened up the hole in the side of the tower too. Interesting. I am going to um, do. I'm going to give you guys some encouraging presents, which is mostly Yay. my super duper optimism. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> that lasts for one minute if you have an ant that on defense rolls. Okay. Lovely. Let's go exploring. I'll grab those shins if nobody else wants them. Okay, three shins. So if there's no trap there, perhaps <laughs> the creature was trying to suggest that if we went up through this tunnel, we could find it and uh, we could trade or something. Just to put a really positive spin I on it. Like, I think that's exactly what's happening, Kuo. I would love to find a friend in this tower. Let us, let us see if that is the case. All right. Uh, so is this, so this is a, a duct that's like five foot by three foot, so I'm definitely like really hunched over here. I'm pretty tall. 
Well, you're probably... all going to be hunched. You're you're, you're basically yeah. going to have to you're going to have to crawl. Mm. Yeah. Because it's oh, five you... it's five feet wide. The and... long way. Oh no. Okay. No. <laughs> all right. Who's all right. going first? I should go first. Maybe we should just look for some external. Uh, uh, entrance before we all start crawling through this, we did. this uh, tunnel to yeah. did we do we do an exhaustive search mm -hmm. the light of morning oh you mean on the outside of the tower on the outside of the tower yeah we've been watching I just it. remember stories of all people finding little tubes and crawling through it and discovering that it didn't actually treasure <laughs> bad, bad places I mean it's like, like 500 feet diameter we could walk at the perimeter on the outside of the building see if there are any entrances within 10 or 20 feet of the ground, yes? That wouldn't take too long. Let's do that. It's easily accomplished, and there are no entrances <laughs> other than the one they found. There's no, nothing that's right there. Just, uh, a door or a window or anything like that. Mm. So when we go back inside, can I look at the exterior of this section of duct and see, like, where it goes up into the ceiling? Um, it doesn't. Uh, it uh, kind of winds around in this chamber and then it goes into a wall that you uh, suspect is blocking you off from a, a, a another section of this substructure. Okay. This is the only I, way. I don't I don't like it either. But uh... um, all right. And then so the I'm other. Gonna... I mean, That's there's right. no, obviously there's two directions, right? Because um, that's that's the one that sort of leaves the chamber most quickly. The other way, it just looks like it just winds around in this substructure. And, and then and then there are branches off of it. Like the, the, the ductwork here is really odd. You don't know what is supposed to be conveyed in these things. Um, and so there are there are branches and you imagine we get a little maze-like. Um, I'm going to use my navigational sense just to look at the outside and go, OK, it's left, left, right, left, and then through the wall. So I can you know once we're on the inside, Right. You're not a hundred percent sure if you're going to know at what point you're passing through the wall, because you'll be inside. Okay. And the ducks are made of of what you would call synth. Hmm. You know, I I do want to go in and I want to follow everyone, but and and maybe I can do be one. But maybe we can have someone stand outside at that juncture where it goes into the wall, and just slightly tap. So as you're going, actually, through. it's unfortunately actually quite high up in the air. How there. high is quite high? Uh, like probably about 20 feet. I guess you could crawl along the outside and sit on top of it. How hard, is this, how hard is this synth? Like how hard would it be for us to punch a hole in it? Uh, you, because you don't really know until you try. Someone there's, there's a torn part here, so can I mess with that and see if it's beyond my personal physical strength? Well, you certainly can't do it with your bare hands. I mean, you can go up and it's it's way stronger than that. Um, you you probably have some tools. You certainly have some tools back in the wagons, um, but it doesn't take you very long to realize like it would it would be some work. Like like whoever made this hole, I mean, it took a long time and good tools and probably some strength. Well, the advantage is that if there's anybody outside who wishes to do us harm while we're in there, it will be difficult for them to. Get through it to harm us. I like the way you think. I re give everyone encouraging presents because it's it went away while we were walking around outside, <laughs> and I head for the tube. I'm ready. We've got this. Perfect. I take the lead. All right, okay. I'll go. I'll go second. Okay. Uh, I'll bring it. almost as good as fourth. First, <laughs> I'll go third. <laughs> okay. Um. So. Uh, you get inside and start crawling. Uh, Tarog is in the lead. You've got a glow globe. Yes. I also have a glow globe in the in the rear because I also have an explorer's back. Okay. And uh, you know it winds around a little bit. There are some there's some turns. Uh, there aren't any branching junctures between where you know you know it's going to go uh, into a new place. So there aren't. I mean, there are turns and whatnot, but there aren't choices to make. Uh, and there are uh, pla places where you're kind of crawling up, but it never gets to be difficult. The um, the inside of these 
uh, tubes are, it's not abrasive, but it's not super slippery either. So you don't have any problem, you know, finding purchase as you kind of just crawl up through it. It's, it's dark and cramped, um, but, it, and there's a, there's kind of a, a very faint smell in here that, that kind of is, is just ever so slightly acrid, but, uh, but that's about it. Um, and you make your way along and you, you, you ascend quite a ways, take some turns, and then uh, up ahead, Tarog, in the light of your glow globe, you see a place where uh, it continues to go straight, but then it also curves off to one side. And you now know you must be in an area that is different than, than what you were seeing when you were looking at the outside of the ducts. And you're muted, Sean. I'll whisper back to Elden that we seem to have passed through that wall. So this is the new space for us. And I'll make sure I have my lucky pipe ready as I'm crawling along through this tube. Okay. And uh, which, so you've you've got two choices, which do you, you go straight or, or turn? I'll go straight, but I'm going to look to the side to see if there's anything of interest down there. It's just more duct. All right. Let's keep going forward. Keep going forward. Um, and you come to a place uh, where there's another juncture. Uh, but this time, it's a juncture that where uh, you can see the tube goes straight up and straight down, oh as well as well as straight ahead, which means that there is a three by five foot oval hole that you'll have to bypass get over somehow. Why have we stopped, Tayrog? There's a, a downward gap that uh, we'll have to cross or climb down. What do you do? Do you have any preferences? I mean, we could just go down. Mm, we, of course, I, the I, ground level of this new chamber. You're the explorer. All right, what does your pipe you say? It doesn't speak to me. Oh, I thought it was lucky. <laughs> lucky is not chatty. <laughs> I'm unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah, I will. Uh, I'll start finding ways to lever myself down. Great. Are there any like, like if this were pieces fitted together, there might be jointed areas that have little lips or recesses or anything like that in this, or is it just pretty much smooth on the interior? It's pretty smooth. I mean, it, it, there aren't any seams or lips or ledges. It's not smooth, smooth. Okay. There's actually, I mean, there's a bit of texture to the to the synth in here. Right. Then I'm just gonna go Batman and Robin style, just kind of one hand on each side across the narrow way and just kind of work my way vertically okay. down. I would like Tarog to make an intellect uh, defense roll. Right. Is this a mental, um, it is. mental effect? All right, I am trained in resist mental effects. Okay. And why not? I'll apply a level of effort to that. Okay. Level of 14. Okay. Um... You were disoriented for just a moment as you started making your way down, but then it seemed to kind of clear up. Hmm. Does this seem something external to me, or was I just weirdly dizzy for no apparent reason? To your sensibilities, you were just dizzy for a minute. Like, you were kind of confused. Like, All right. It was as though, as though being inside these ducts was starting to confuse you about which way is up and which way is down and which way is left and right. Okay. I will call up. Take just, just careful here. It's so weird. We don't have any external way of orienting ourselves. So I think that the tube might be at a slight angle and feels strange. Uh, okay. Um, hmm. Is it all safe down there? Should we come down? So I far, am. like, how far did I get down? Um, uh, how as far as you want to get down. Um, the, the good news is is that thanks to the the tightness and the uh, the texture 
it, you, you, at least going down, there isn't even really a roll involved, as long as you're going slow and carefully. Okay. Yeah, they'll definitely go. I mean, I'm trained. Too. Unless you've got an inability in climbing, but I'm pretty sure none of you have that. Right. Uh, I'll get down to the bottom, and is it? How does it turn? Um, it it just suddenly angles and levels off. Okay. And uh, uh, what, uh, Shauna, you had a question or something? I have an inability in movement related tasks, which I oh really includes climbing. <laughs> <laughs> I was I stand corrected. Um, you are going to have to make a roll if you're going to go down this. Um, I require a level of effort for this. Oh, well then, then oh. you're. Oh okay, great. <laughs> Probably a good time for it. Yeah. Okay, so you are all gonna follow Tayrog down this, down this incline, and or you know down basically a shaft, and then it swoops down, and it you take a couple of more turns, and uh, you come to another hole in the side of the duct. Yes. It has clearly been worked and and ripped open. I will peek out, and then if it seems to be safe in an immediate area, I will crawl through and stand guard as everyone else comes out. Okay. Uh, that all seems fine. Uh, you're all able to get out, and you definitely feel as though uh, you are on the ground level of the uh, like the ring. other half, sort of, of the substructure of the tower. And you see there's more supports and whatnot, and there's another big device here as well um, that is uh, seated on the floor uh, on sort of a, a big pedestal, and or rather more like a platform. Um, it's it's maybe six feet long and four feet wide and three feet tall. There's some control panels and whatnot. Um, it does not seem to be there. There does not there is nothing to its appearance that makes it seem like it's active. No but it's not smashed. Just a rolling, and it's not smashed. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, if if your orientation is right, um, and and you're kind of skilled in this Tayrog, so you can confirm, like it, you are sort of in the other half. If you cut the base of the tower in half, right? So there's two semicircles, and this device would kind of be about the same position that the one that got smashed on the other side would be. And there is no, obviously, no torn exit in here. I'm going to, um, how far away is it from our space? Just maybe 20, 30 feet. All right, I would like to- A little, a little farther, 60, 70 feet. Okay, uh, once everybody's through, I would like to get a search between here and there, looking for other tripwires and trap sort of things. Just, okay. and if it's safe, then I'll motion for Kuo to come over and take a look at this panel, or this. Okay. okay. It, it seems safe. Okay, then I'll walk over there. Okay. Um, what you do find is uh, pretty obviously, there's some signs that someone or something has, you think maybe even kind of recently, you know, opened up a couple of panels. You can see there are like pry bar marks and uh, there have been things removed, uh, you know, obvious little places where something used to plug into a, a place that there's nothing there now. Um, you know, this clearly to Kuo and to Tayrog, this, this looks like the post-mortem of a salvaging operation. But we can sell it here anyway. It's just it's a little more difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there there might be more, um, but it sort of looks like someone knew what they were doing. Uh, and in fact, one more thing, um, there's uh, a a uh, a used and, and and completely used up torch laying next to this um, that again looks like you know, is not that old. I, I, I don't mean like hours, but probably only days. Right. Yes, Darcy. 
yeah, I don't know if this is appropriate, so feel free to shoot me down for this. Uh, I, I have some really cool player intrusion uh, abilities that I'm eager to use, but we are, they tend to deal with other NPCs that are around, so this one may not be appropriate, but one of them is friendly NPC. Um, an NPC you don't, uh, you don't know, someone you don't know that well, or someone you know but hasn't been particularly friendly in the past chooses to help you. I, I would, if there's a person in here who might be friendly to us, it, nope. Okay. There isn't. Okay. There isn't anybody here. Oh, Sorry. it needs to be like in this room. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, or or you need to be a little, at least aware that or something, right? But there there doesn't. I mean, there was somebody here clearly. I mean, you're you're, you're finding the clues of that, but cool. they are they are not here. Okay. Then I'll hold Sorry. on. Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. I'm learning how they work. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. I don't think we should try and salvage salvage this now. I think we should just put it on our map that we're making, of course. Um, I say looking around at everybody. <laughs> of course. Um, oh, girl, that's what I thought. Um, but continue to look for these creatures that are, or entities, or other, you know, who knows, maybe there's other nanos, glaives, and rights in here looking to salvage our space. We need to deal with them. So does okay. this thing take up the entire other half of the, the yes. other half of the ground mm -hmm. of the structure? Then how about we do a quick search of this whole floor? Okay. There's nothing here other than the device. Shall we go Find up? Any other... Sorry. I was going to ask any other conduits that have holes in them? No. There's nothing here other than the device in the hole that you came to. I would like to... No. <laughs> I would like to try uh, and see if I can't get this device working, or at least try and figure out what it might have been, you know, since it's actually, you know, at least not completely smashed. That would be an understanding so. Numenera. All right, I'm going to apply two levels of effort, and I am trained in understanding Numenera, so that should ease my task by three steps. I roll an eight. Uh, you're you're certain that it had something to do with the conduits, with the with the ducts. Um, it may have regulated the movement of something through them, like uh, a gas or a liquid or something. But um, it's because it's been if it functioned before, it certainly doesn't function now. And then, of course, the other one is utterly destroyed. All right. Well, I say it's beyond. It's beyond my comprehension to understand this weird mechanism of the prior worlds. Let's explore more. Okay. I was wanting to look to see if there are any places where the ducks went up on this yeah, side. Yeah, lots. Just okay. like in the other room. Yep. Okay. Well, then let's. I'm going to just kind of trace the navigation of get to the closest one of those and suggest we get back in the tunnel and go up. Okay. It would definitely be the one where you would decide to go down instead. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that would be the closest one. All right, then I'll scram over there. Okay. All right. Uh, so same thing bef as before. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, so I'm Do sorry. I need to make a roll? If we're uh, going. Uh, are you going to use a level of effort? Um, I. If you do, then you don't. But otherwise, yeah, you would have to. Um, yes, because I still have. I can. I can recover if I need to. Oh, then okay, I don't then, need to make a then, roll. Cool. Cool. Okay, so I got this. Um, at that point, you can go in and you start going up and you're moving around and there. I mean, we're not going to map out this entire ductwork system. Um, you you make some choices and uh, uh, you know you find places where there's there's branching things and but you're you, you feel as though you're getting up into the tower uh and at this point um Tarog, i need you to make another intellect defense roll again i will apply a level of effort and i am trained and i roll a 16. okay uh, again you feel <sighs> this time it's a little bit different you don't feel disoriented you're you're moving along. You're you're doing your crawl, and you you get, reach a point where you 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 start to move forward, and then you suddenly realize that there is a there's a a, a turn down, and you didn't notice it. 
it, you thought it was just going to go keep going straight, and you had to catch yourself and and stop from falling. These ducks are weird. Uh, they're I'm strangely disoriented in these. I, I apologize. The rest of you do not seem to be having this problem. Uh, I mean, it's it's weird, right? I mean, and it's cramped, and I, I guess it's probably generally disorienting to be in a in a ductwork system like this. But you're not seem, you don't seem to be having the same reaction as Tayrod. Tayrod was the only one of us who was trapped under that weird rubber, though, right? So that's what that's what Kuo's thinking that maybe he just had a little uh, still having some issues. With oh, that. from the trees. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. A little smothered for a little while. <laughs> but that's I keep that going. to myself. I just like keep on going. I yell. <laughs> hey, Raga, let us know if we can help. But I I trust you. At that point, um, when you when you when you say keep on going, you hear from that turn down. You hear a voice, and it says, "Hello." It seems very distant. It, it, is someone up there? It sounds human, though, not like the voice we had before. Not it does not sound like the Falafas. <sighs> I will holler down that hole and say, Hello, we are new here. Who are you? Can, can you get me out of here? <gasps> yes. yes. Keep talking. We'll follow your voice. Okay, it's definitely coming from straight down. It's a rescue. And I'll head down. Okay. So uh, what happens is you... you you, you move down, and then uh, you you get to a point uh, where the the conduit kind of levels off again. But then there's another rent, uh, a hole that's been pulled apart. But this time it's it's on the bottom of the of the conduit of the of the duct. And uh, when you light when you bring your light, you can see there's probably about a 15 foot drop and looking up at you is a man a human man um he's got kind of a bristly beard uh he's wearing a, a leather jerkin uh and uh there looks like there's maybe some like a pack and some gear and stuff but they're not on him right now they're kind of off to the side so you just kind of get the vague impression of it being there um and uh he's 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 in the dark and uh he's but he he kind of uh, uh Winces a little bit in, at the side of your light, but he he looks up at you still, you know, as much as he can with eager eyes. But it's about a fifteen foot drop down to the floor, and he says, I, I, "I've been here. I, I I don't know days. I'm sure, maybe a week. I, uh, please, can you can you get me out of here?" I think so. I'll check are, my gear. Should I have a said, rope? Are, are there any of those creatures around? I haven't seen any creatures, but we know that there's something skittering around. You haven't seen them? I haven't seen them. You said they're like insects, but they're the size of a man. Uh. I'm going to throw you a rope, friend. I'll get a a rope out of my pack, and uh, I'll tie it around my lucky pipe and use my lucky pipe as a brace in this hole in the conduit that we're in. Okay. Lower the other rope end down to this person. Okay. Um, so he goes over um, and he starts grabbing his stuff and he's like throwing stuff in a in a backpack um, and uh, uh, it, it sort of, I mean, you can, you know, you can get kind of a, he's been just sitting down here in the dark for a long time and there's the sort of refuse and bones of, of whatever he's found to eat and um, or you know whatever he brought with him to eat um, and uh, but you know he's grabbing his stuff and it looks uh, you know uh, cool you know to your eye you, know, you see that he's got some salvage right and he's got some tools and uh uh, but anyway, that's the, that's kind of the stuff that he's gathering up, and, and as soon as he throws that all in his pack, he goes over to your rope, and he begins climbing up. Um, and uh, he, he he does not look like he is a stranger to climbing. 
Um, but he does seem a little, maybe a little weak and disoriented. Hmm. When he gets to the top, I'll help pull him in. Okay. Uh, thank you, friend. Who who are you? You can call me Tay. This is Elden Keen Kuo. What may he is, call you? He, my name is Ulrinic. Uh You can call me anything you'd like. Aww. You can call me the luckiest man in the world. Did you get trapped? What happened to you? Uh, it, I, I think it's those things. They, they, I, I think they trapped me here. I, I, I don't really know what happened. I was, I was exploring the ducks and I started to get, I don't know, I started to see things that weren't there or, or I didn't see things that were there or, I, I, I don't know. But, but next thing I knew, fell down this hole and, and there's no way up from here. Does that sound at all like what I was experiencing? Maybe a little bit. I mean, oh. there was there was a point at which there was there was a shaft going down, and you didn't see it until you didn't see it. You felt it, right? You right. started to kind of fall and then caught yourself. Well, we are trying to get further up into this structure to see if there's anything to salvage, and we have some friends with us who we plan to have settle once this area is safe. So you can either come up with this or settle we can... here. Sure. Well, they're, they're those creatures. Well, we can get rid of those creatures. The creatures lured him there, but have not harmed him. Maybe they're just hoping he'd starve to death. Sometimes, I think they, I think they came to the, the hole. He kind of points at the hole he just crawled up. Sometimes I think they just came to the hole and they and they looked at me. So kind they are intelligent. Them. It was dark, but I could feel them. It was like they were watching me. Mm. Well, do you want to go further in with us, or do you want us to show you the way out? Uh, uh, I don't know if I could remember how I got to this point anymore. Um, I'll, I'll just stick with you. But um, do you have anything to eat? Maybe some water? We have supplies. I'll give him some food and my, my flask of water. He hungrily eats whatever you give him, um, but he's actually even more eager for the water. Um, while we take a minute as he, he drinks and eats, um, have you heard the creatures make any noise? Do they speak? Do they react if you spoke at them? No, I never heard them talk. I, I, I never really... I don't know. I, uh, I, I have no idea if they're... the kind of folk that I mean I don't know if they're intelligent or if they're just animals or creatures or something I I, I don't know uh, but you can sometimes I could hear them sometimes walking around in the conduits well, well, we will keep just, you safe yeah like sometimes sometimes you just when they're around you just kind of get this this feeling in your bones, like like things are, are ever so slightly rattling. These are large vermin. I do not like the sound of. We should we should we should eliminate them. Kuo says, matter of fact. I wonder if it's purposeful or if it's just an effect that they give off. I mean, like Elden said, they they didn't come for you. Nothing bad happened. Maybe they've trapped me here. I mean, we've seen ants and other small creatures work together and build hives and stuff. So they could be unintelligent, but still. These aren't ants, friend. They're big. I understand. I'm saying, you know, big ants, like small ants, could work together and not be able to speak in the way that you and I speak. Uh, May I? uh... May I roll to try to understand this person's motivations, or, or not roll? I, I would like to. I I, I took training in uh, understanding thing, motivations. Right? Yeah. 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 So. Sure. Absolutely. Um, I'm gonna spend. Uh, let's see. Uh, a level of effort on this. Okay. So eased by two. Mm-hmm. Oh, boo! I rolled a three. <laughs> I have no XP to 
right? That's I do fine. have the one XP. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, you don't, you don't quite get, um, you know, the full picture of this guy. He seems, I mean, he he seems very much like someone who has been trapped down in the dark without very right. much to eat or drink for a long time, and so that is absolutely the top level of yep. his of his mind um but uh you know he he strikes you as someone who's not necessarily a coward right i mean mm-hmm. he's he's exploring this place by himself apparently um but but whatever these creatures are definitely got him freaked out and you're sure that whatever he's saying about them he believes but you're not a hundred percent sure that you're necessarily getting a hundred percent accuracy about what he's actually experienced that makes sense well i think we should try and get out of these ducts and into you know something above the lowest level of this structure because this is a hard area to defend and it's confusing and hard to navigate Well, he says, I, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I, I, I think we're somewhere, we're already pretty high. Um, do you think maybe we should just try and make our own hole to get out of here? Uh, we, we could, uh, I don't, I don't quite have the tools with me to, to do that. Do you, I've got a pry bar here and, um, you know, some small snippers and whatnot, but... Yeah, I've got some light tools for taking apart the Numenera. Yeah, you think what you need are heavy tools. Yeah, um, so we had, we had this opportunity come up to go down into this room that's not ground floor, not the understructure, but this isolated chamber. Um, there were more options for continuing on at the same level, though, correct, Tayrog? Mm-hmm. Yeah, then I uh, perhaps we can explore this level a little better, or or do you do you feel feel the instinct to go higher? So uh, I'm going to ask this person's name because he just told us, you know, tell oh, us what you want. Well, oh, Renick. first he said go oh, Renick. Renick. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm all Renick. I was just speaking over that. Okay. Um, so do you think we're actually above the ground level where you were? Yes. Oh, well then let's explore that and find a secure space. Do we sense that he's correct? Or that he's actually Well, you know you went up quite a ways. Okay. Um, And then, you know, there are some times when you've gone up, but it's been an incline as opposed to a straight up shaft. Oh, right, okay. So it's, uh, you know, even with your skills in navigation and whatnot, it's, it's, I mean, this is not an easy way to navigate the inside of a place. Okay. Also, I just want to verify. So, if if he doesn't have the tools to get in or out, then whoever made the holes is not this person, correct? Okay, that yeah. seems like a legit assu- assumption. Right. Okay. Uh, you could ask him, but um... I-, I wanted to make sure that I was that I was uh, just understanding what he had with him. Kuo says, if, if it ever needs that we need those tools, I actually have those tools in my carry-all, and I actually have the cipher that's called this, the Quick Retriever attached to that carry-all, and they have the other end right here, so. As, as I say that, I glance at Elrenic going, oh, I wish I hadn't said this out loud. <laughs> but uh, we can retrieve them quickly if necessary. You know, he doesn't seem as though he uh, completely understands what you just said. Um, he's Okay. But let's not do that unless we absolutely need it, because that's a one-use uh, device, that, that cipher. Okay. All right. Well, if we're going to explore here, then we need to all climb down back to where Ulrenic was. You're you're navigating, Tayrog. There's no way out there, he says. Yeah, he's been trapped there. We don't want to do that. Oh. I didn't think we wanted to go out. I thought we wanted to look around and see... I mean, if there are these insect creatures, maybe there's a nest somewhere. They're the threat. Um, yeah. They're there. in the ducts, so we need to explore more of the ducts. He says that the the when he fell down in that hole, I mean, he of course explored that area as much as he could. It's not very big. Okay. 
well then we should continue on. And I'm sorry, Sean is very hard, bad at navigating things. So <laughs> an inability that I have. In oh, playing. We know. <laughs> done, you've done a great job. The confidence, was, which yeah, it's very good. Um, I I, I vote for. Sure that'll help. I vote for checking out, uh, going kind of laterally. Um, back up to where we were traversing the ducts and not intending to go much higher or lower, but um, going laterally to see if we can't find another rent in a duct to find a new compartment. Okay. Speak speaks wisdom. Mm -hmm. Okay. You start doing that and you start exploring. Um, where would you like Ulrenic to be sort of in your, your little caravan here through the ducts? Maybe one in front of me, so since I have the other light, so I can kind of see, see him. I mean, he seems okay. trustworthy for a random person we just met, but I want to keep an eye on him a little bit. Um, he is armed, um, but not heavily armed. He's got like, it's, you'd either call it a short, wide-bladed sword or a really, really big knife. But uh, most of what he has is his tools. And his, I mean, but they're. Uh, they're, they're, they're more tools like what you guys carry um, and not like big, huge tools other than I, he's got a big, empty crowbar. Ooh, do we have a player intrusion? I would like to use a Delve player intrusion. Okay. To, to help my character and myself. Um, <laughs> uh, there's an option in uh, Destiny. It says, it's called Serendipitous Landmark. Just when it seems like the path is lost or you are, a trail marker landmark or simply the way the terrain a quarter bends rises or falls away suggests to you the best path forward at least from this point. Okay. I like to use that just to get like a sense of, oh, now I'm finally understanding like the, how these conduits are all connecting and I think we need to go this way. That is brilliant. Okay. To get to where? Um, out of this small chamber that Olrenic was just in and into an adjacent chamber. Okay. Um, that is great. So, uh, uh, with Tarog in the lead, um, and, and with a newfound sense of purpose, it seems, uh, Tarog leads the band to a, uh, past a few more bends, past a couple of other offshoots, mostly kind of staying on the same, uh, level, more or less. You go up and down a little bit. Um, these tubes don't really seem to follow any rhyme or reason that you can understand with your human minds um and uh but eventually uh you find uh another hole and you you can you know just like the other ones this one has been worked open and you it with the light that you bring holding your glow globe it shines down into a chamber where, where you're kind of at ground level more or less right there's it's there's not a long drop down to the ground and this room is totally different um, than anything you've seen before uh, the walls here have kind of a strange almost crystalline bluish sheen to them there are uh, a number of mm, for lack of a better word you'd call them plinths of of kind of sparkling lights that flicker on and off and then amid the plinths you would you would probably call it a nest of refuse and trash and organic uh plates of carapace maybe or something like that that have been shed um and 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 it forming just sort of this sort of circular nest among these plinths obviously the nest while it looks like it's been here a long time uh, it, it is much much newer than the rest of this place um and you can see there are actually like um uh, like things hung on Part, you know, little protrusions from the plinths where there are these lights, but then someone has come and just like hung uh, uh, like uh, strips of leather that have a weird little shiny thing kind of dangling from them. There seems, there, there is definitely a, a definite theme of lots and lots of shiny things kind of all gathered and worked into this nest. And looking very, very surprised 
uh, are two insectoid looking creatures. Um, and we have a cool image of these things that we can show everyone. Uh, but basically they look a little bit like cockroaches with the sort of the front part of them upright. And uh, they have like, in the same way that I was saying that they kind of have like shiny things that have been attached to wires and cords and stuff hanging all over the, the instrumentation and whatnot in this room, they kind of have the same thing sort of dangling from their, their, their antennae and their, uh, 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 what's the word I'm trying to think of? Darcy, their their mouth parts, their uh, their yes. proboscis, their intent. Yes, their... proboscis and, and the the mandibles. Yeah, mandibles. Yeah, mandibles. Um, <clears throat> and They're so, so cool. They... Sorry, I was looking at the art and I was just like enraptured. <laughs> I couldn't. Even... <sighs> <laughs> So um, they and they and they kind of turn sort of with surprise, uh, but they make no sound. But just like Ulrinic said, you kind of uh, as soon as they do turn around and look at you, you kind of get this feeling like like you know you can feel like your your bones and your insides just kind of vibrating ever so slightly. Like there's almost like there's a sound that you can't quite hear with your ears but you can kind of feel it in your body and that is the terrible terrible cliffhanger that i am going to stop things on uh, as you've got these weird little insect things i'm so mad and at I, myself I keep, saying, I keep saying little um but they're actually you know human large. size they're, they're the, the size of a person i had said in a previous episode that eldon hated bugs and it's breaking my heart right now. So we will have to see how Eldon handles this. Awesome. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Oh, they're so great. Cool. Great. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what these are. <laughs> right. So, uh, like I said, uh, we will um, wrap this up next time. What I'm going to do is uh, we will resolve this one way or another, and then I'm going to uh, maybe uh, award some XP. Uh, um, Ulrinic, by the way, is is terrified of these things, so I don't know if he's going to be a very much help in oh. either an interaction or a confrontation, whatever you tr try to do with these things. That's two down, Elden and Ulrinic. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got to like bugs here. It's, it's not my rules. <laughs> As, as Egon said in uh, Ghostbusters, I'm terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. We've been lacking in our slacking in our Ghostbusters uh, movie quotes. <laughs> well, you know, they, they scroll through my head, but I don't necessarily say it out loud. It's a Ghostbusters quote for every occasion. It's true. Uh, so I have a few Twitch announcements, unless you have anything else... Uh... I, I have uh, something that I would like to talk about, yes. um, and that is uh, we have a Kickstarter that we are going to be launching here uh, within the next couple of weeks. It is for a brand new book. We just announced this today. You should go to MontyGoodGames.com to see the announcement, um, but it's for a book called Your Best Game Ever, and this is a book Probably the, the most exciting thing about this book is this book is for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're a player or a GM. It doesn't matter what you game you play. If you play tabletop RPGs, this book is for you. And uh, it is just yeah, um, the, the compilation of decades of playing and working on games and, and thinking about games. And so this book covers everything from, you know, being a GM and a storyteller and crafting worlds and stories to being a player and working with uh, the other players to help create a story and create a cohesive whole. It's about finding the right game group that matches your own style and how you can possibly go about that, how you can foster a, a game group and, and, and kind of work together and 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 work together in you know harmony instead of conflict how to resolve those conflicts you know it it talks about gaming at home it talks about gaming online um it 
you know, hosting a game, what, 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 you know, some cool and innovative ideas on, you know, uh, providing atmosphere to providing food mm -hmm. and, you know, it'll even have recipes for, you know, game night and how to theme those to, you know, whatever game you're playing and just so many things, all the sort of things that go into a role-playing game that don't have anything to do with the rules and the dice and all of that. But there, uh, we hope this book will be really uh, helpful and, um, you know, it, whether you are just starting as a role player or whether you have been playing for 40 years like me, um, hopefully this book will have lots and lots of stuff for you. Awesome. It will be happening this month. Uh, we have not announced the date yet, but uh, stay tuned because we're going to be pulling back the curtains on a, a lot of the details you're really really eager to know so get excited and uh one thing you know the thing i'm just over the moon about is how it's every every person who you know i, f I feel like we all lots of us have had the experience of i'm interested in role-playing games and i just haven't gotten to play my first one yet you have to get a group and so this book is for people who haven't even played yet right it's 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 got stuff for people who've been gaming for decades and decades tons of new cool stuff for them to love and yet also someone who just saw a stream for the first time and wants to try it out it's gonna have something for everybody in it so yay ah man so we will uh so your best game ever is actually a youtube ser uh, video um a youtube series we've been talking about for a while um and so we had done one that is now just uploaded on our youtube called uh don't randomize fun and so you should absolutely go check that out, uh, especially I know some people in chat were interested in the Jade Colossus, which has this fabulous, you know, ruin uh, mapping engine. And, uh, you know, there's all sorts of ways that we, we enjoy randomness. Uh, <laughs> oh, right, right. Um, but, uh, but that video will talk, tell you about how to use it appropriately. Um, so we are going to be announcing another one of those videos coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. I think until we get everything nailed down, I don't want to announce it, but more of that, which you seem to really like. And uh, of course, this will pick up again in two weeks. So come find out what is up with these bug creatures on July 24th uh, as we pick this game up again. Yeah, any other announcements we have to give? I mean, a, a number of people in chat have their our Kickstarter backers, and so they have their Discovery and Destiny uh, core book PDFs, which I'm so excited by. So um, there's still, I think it, there's still a chance to pre-order if you want to get in on the deal of the print core book plus the PDF, but that won't be lasting long because they are basically, you know, at, at the door. Um, so we can't wait for you to be playing these games in your own homes. So please tweet at us, follow us on all the places, and tell us about your experiences. We will talk to you again soon, right? Bye Good night, guys. everybody. Thanks for Yay watching. Yay to see. <laughs>